Rising yields hurting tech stocks Friday, uh, driving the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ lower. Well, amid the volatility, Graham Tanaka's Tanaka Growth Fund has returned 40% so far this year. Well, let's get some market insight and some stock ideas from the president of Tanaka Capital Management. Welcome back, uh, Graham. Good afternoon to you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks, Good Ryan. seeing you, too. Well, you know, Graham, it's, it's, it's the pattern. Yields rise, inflation concerns rise, tech stocks, growth stocks fall. You're managing a growth fund. Um, are you worried about yields at these levels? Today popped up about one, above 1.6%. And if not, what levels would worry you? Yeah, 1.6% on the 10-year is low historically, unless you look at the last five to 10 years. I mean, the 10-year treasuries are down because inflation has been down and below been below Fed expectations, economists' expectations, actually for 15 to 20 years. Now, we have done a lot of original research on what has caused inflation to run so low, and we think that's going to continue to, to influence inflation downwards in terms of being zero to, to 1%. And, and that has to do with technology permanently lowering inflation. So you're not, you don't think yields are going to rise much more? No, um, as a matter of fact, well, I, I, I think uh, we take a long-term view on things, okay? And looking out two to five years, we don't see inflation going much above two to three percent. And and I think the Fed's target of two percent inflation on the reported numbers will still be hard for them to achieve long-term because of what we call digital deflation and demographic deflation, which is slow growth in the economy and uh, the population. Which will cap treasury yields around where in two to three years? Um, I, I, maybe 2%, hmm. uh, maybe uh, two to two to a half percent on the 10 year and a little longer on the on the on the 30 year, perhaps. Uh, given that view, then, Graham, I assume then what are, are you buying on these dips taking advantage of? Yeah, yes. Well, we actually have had a fair amount of cash come into our fund in the last uh, three months, which is great. Uh, and we've been putting it to work carefully and it's given us a chance, this is sort of a luxury when you have new inflows, to buy some new names and to diversify a bit of, of, from our winners, even though we like our winners, uh, to some more pro-cyclical names. So that has allowed us to, to balance out the portfolio and reduce volatility. So what have you been buying then on the cyclical names? Well, I, you know, we have we have bought um, uh, Ben brought in my office has really been really big on some of these um, macro names like, um, you know, Accenture and Mastercard, which are arguably tech companies, but they're participating in the economy and will benefit from a recovery in the economy. Uh, we also have uh, Carlyle Group that is definitely a pro cyclical company with one third of their assets in cash. They're they're a private equity firm and they're buying assets cheap. In the today's market, and uh, and then Viacom CBS we added to a few months ago, and, and that's up. Uh, I don't know, double this year, more than double this year alone. So that's part of the reason we've we've uh, uh, appreciated so much this year. Um, but we have some tech and biotech names that are still doing well. Right, and uh, Viacom CBS, as you point out, uh, more than doubled this year. But uh, your second biggest holding, at least on the list that I looked at, was Amherst, right after Apple. Uh, that uh, the shares of tripled so far this year, sevenfold over 12 months. Um, why this biotech stock? What do you see in it? Because it's got no earnings so far. It, yeah, right. It has no earnings yet. Um, we project that they will be cash flow positive this year, uh, certainly towards the end of this year, and, and earnings positive possibly as early as next year as it crosses over break even. It's growing revenues top line 50 to 100 percent a year. Now, who does that remind you of? Well, Tesla, which we also own in our top five, Tesla is, uh, I was actually the first buy side analyst to visit Tesla's plant uh, about five or six years ago. And, uh, and it was early, uh, but it gave, it's the same perspective on Amaris. Am it's, it's early, uh, Amaris is maybe a year, year and a half behind Tesla in terms of breaking through break even, bursting through break even, and then generating very rapid double digit growth in earnings. And, and, I, and Amaris, what's interesting is I, we think it is the leader in this what's called synthetic biology revolution. And this is where biology, biotech is used to alter the DNA of yeast so that they can have the yeast consume sugar and make the chemical you want, the molecule you want. So they can produce almost any molecule in nature. We did an interview on, it's on YouTube. If you just go to Tanaka Amaris, A-M-Y-R-I-S, and you can see the interview. Um, 
that goes into the science. This is a brand new science platform that is going to launch the next industrial revolution, we believe. And we were early with Intel in the digital revolution. We were early with Tesla in the EV revolution. So this is a new one, synthetic biology. All Thanks. right, we'll, we'll revisit you on that one. So the new okay. Tesla of biotech, huh, as, as you see it. Thanks a lot, Graham. Appreciate it. Thank you. Our thanks to, to Graham Tanaka of Tanaka Capital Management. I'm Fred Kantayama in New York. This is Reuters.